Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial today on inventory items. The inventory item feature is where we create a list of all other items that our property may sell or that our property needs to report on financially. This can be anything from our seasonal site fees, cancellation fees, electricity, food and beverage and even tours. Essentially, it's going to be anything else that you're offering to guests or need to report on within the system. We recommend that you have a preset list for your staff to be able to search and select from. This will ensure your financial reports display correct information on them. Today I'm going to be walking through a variation of scenarios of different inventory items that we may set up within the system and how we can use them in different areas or features. The first one we're going to look at is creating an inventory item for something that we might just sell in our front office, such as a bottle of water. To do this, all we do is head to our inventory item page and select add inventory item. We then need to enter the name of the item. This is what the staff members will search for and then a description which will appear on the client account when we raise the charge. Then we need to select which sub-client account it should be split into and most importantly, what general ledger account it needs to be assigned to for financial or tax purposes. If you are ever unsure what to set this against, we recommend that you discuss this with your accountant before selecting. If this item is tax free, we can switch this on to yes. Alternatively, on the right hand side, we also have a section called override tax rate. Now, if you happen to have any custom tax rates set up within your new book system that are to be used for specific inventory items, you'll be able to select into this box and select that specific rate and new book will ensure it applies that specific tax calculation to these items when they are raised. If we head over to the stock control settings tab, you do have the option to enable if you'd like to manage stock of this bottled water. So we can simply enable this here and on the right, there's also a low stock warning email that we could send to a particular user to advise that you've reached a low stock level and you can enter the amount below. Now, once we save this, in the top, we'll then have a manage stock button and this allows us to add how much available stock we currently have so that we can then start selling it and the stock levels will slowly reduce until we need to reorder. Now that we have this created, if someone came into the office and wanted to purchase a bottle of water, I would simply head into my cash account from my menu, select add charge in the top right, search for water from my inventory item list. You'll also see the amount of stock available. I can then select save and pay to advise that the person has paid for that water. The next scenario I would like to take a look at is going to be great for those of you who manage a lot of long-term bookings and potentially charge weekly or monthly repeat charge fees. If you do this, we do recommend that you add those in as an inventory item so you have all of your available billing options pre-set up in the system and your staff know what the various fees are and which ones to use. To create, simply head to your inventory item page and select add inventory item. In the name, we're going to pop in that it's a monthly RV site fee, and I'm also going to use that as the same description that will appear on the client account when my monthly fees go out. We're going to enter the amount that we charge for this for the full month, and we are also going to ensure that we select the correct sub-client account and general ledger account for financial purposes. Now that these steps are done, we're going to click into the repeat charge tab. Now this allows us to set certain system defaults for the inventory item when we're using it as a repeat charge. As this is a monthly fee, I want to set it to an interval of one month and we also have some other repeat charge settings that can also be adjusted here. Lastly, you can also set an automated scheduled price increase or decrease for a future date and this will ensure that any bookings that are using this as a repeat charge will automatically update to the new price on that date without the need to manually adjust the bookings in the future. So simply click into this tab, add, and then select what kind of increase it is, if it's a percentage or fixed amount. And once we've saved this, if we were going to make a long-term booking and use our repeat charge option, when we select this inventory item for monthly fee, you'll be able to see that it pulls through, that it bills every month, and you can see the $500 value here. Now the next scenario I'd like to take a look at 
is great for those of you who might want to offer booking extras to your guests. These can also be sold online as an upsell if you wish to. Today we're going to create one called breakfast per person. So we're going to do as we've done previously, we're going to add an inventory item and fill in the main first tab. We're going to call this breakfast per person. Now as this is actually going to be something that we charge per person, in the price section here I'm going to leave it as zero and then I'm going to head over to the booking slash rate tab to set the pricing at the per person cost and to also check over some really helpful settings that we can also configure within here. Now if it's something that we charge daily we can also change the interval from once off to particular days or repeat interval. On the right, we then have an array of settings that impact the overall cost of the booking or how it affects the total rate. On the right, we have the ability to set whether this cost will increase the nightly rate of a booking. Alternatively, if we wanted to create a bundled package, so let's say we wanted the breakfast to actually be included in the nightly rate or cost, we can actually put it on include. The last option here is exclude. Now this is great if you happen to charge for any refundable deposits that do come at an extra fee, but they are allowed to potentially pay them on check-in and therefore we don't want them to contribute to the nightly cost or the rate of their actual stay. The travel agent commissionable and the discount settings are important to check also. If you happen to add any extras onto bookings that are from a travel agent, you need to set whether or not the agent is going to get a commission on this breakfast as well. So if it was just a standard booking and they didn't have a travel agent but you added a booking discount, you've also got the option here to advise whether this breakfast item should also receive the discount or not. If your item is something that bills daily but you don't want to generate a breakfast charge on arrival, you can also adjust the ignore arrival and departure dates here. In addition to this, at the bottom, you can also have the system generate a task advising a specific department to arrange breakfast for the guest. Lastly, if you would also like to offer this as a booking add-on for your new book online page, head to the booking add-on tab, enable to sell online, and then also read through the pricing options and other restrictions that you can enable to reduce when it is available and how many they can purchase. Now, if I was to make a booking over the phone and the guest asked if they could add on breakfast, all we would do when we're making the booking is head to the inventory item button, search and select breakfast, and it will then pull through those default settings. In this scenario, it's going to calculate per person and add it on top of their nightly rate. The last options we have to discuss are how we can set up additional charges for items that we sell under our facility rental or facility hire feature, such as rollaway beds. And we also have the ability to create additional charges or billing items for our activities feature. So this is great for those of you who may offer guided tours where you want guests to be able to purchase a ticket to attend and there's an additional cost for that item. As we've done previously, all we need to do to set these up is head to the Add Inventory Item page. For the first one, we'll do a facility hire rental for our rollaway beds. We simply fill in all of the fields in the first tab that are necessary. With this particular pricing, if we are charging just a flat fee for a facility, we would put a base price in the first tab. If you do, however, charge a per person fee, we would leave this one as zero and then we would head over to our facility and activity tab and set the per occupant type pricing. We also have the ability to set here how often this is to be billed. In this scenario, it is going to be per day. At the very bottom of the page, I can also add an inventory item task to notify my housekeeping team to deliver the rollaway bed on arrival to the guest. Once we've saved this, when it comes to setting up your facility categories for the items that you do rent out to guests, you simply preset the inventory item in here and it will ensure that it pulls across the correct billing details onto the booking or onto the standalone rental when booked. As you can see, if I make a booking and a guest would like to book a rollaway bed, I simply scroll down and click onto the facility hire or facility rental button, select the facility and as you can see the cost will pull through. 
The final scenario is creating an inventory item to use for an activity that we may offer in our property. We head to the add inventory item page, fill in the main tab, leave the cost as zero if this is going to be a per person cost for a ticket. We then head to our facility and activity tab to set the actual occupant pricing. So within here I'm going to set various pricing for my adults and children. Once saved, when you go to create the activity that you want to sell to your guests, within the accounting details tab, you can preset the inventory item to ensure it pulls through the correct pricing. As you can see here, when I'm making a booking and a guest is interested in purchasing a ticket for an activity, I simply select the activities button and it will display what is available and pull through the cost correctly. As we've now gone through some of the main inventory item scenarios, I'd also like to point out how we can manage these effectively within the system. Firstly, if at any point you need to bulk update the general ledger accounts, the sub-client accounts, or even deactivate any old inventory items that you're no longer using, you can simply head to the inventory item page, use the bulk tick option on the left, and at the very bottom, select update details. On the next screen, you can then select the option which you would like to change and then save. In addition to the above, if you have an inventory item that is set within a rate and you want to change the price and then update the rate so it matches this new cost, you can do this first by changing the price within the inventory item. Once we've saved the change, you can then select the Manage Inventory Item button in the top bar. Head to the bottom of the page and click on the associated rates that the inventory items have been set within. You can then bulk tick the rates you wish to update select the synchronize button and then confirm. This will ensure that any new bookings that are placed on that rate will reflect this updated price. Please note it won't update any existing bookings who have already been placed in the system on the old price. Second to this, if you do have any inventory items that are being used as repeat charges and you'd wish to make a price adjustment and would like to, it to update all bookings on this repeat charge right now, you can also use the Manage Associated Items button to complete this. Again, edit the inventory item and save your price change or adjustment. You can then head to the Manage Associated Items button and at the bottom of the page, you'll see the Associated Repeat Charges tab. You can simply bulk tick the bookings you wish to update and select Synchronize and then Confirm. Please note this will only update future repeat charges that are due to be generated and it will not update any existed charges that have already been raised onto the account. To finish off the video tutorial, I would like to run through our inventory item report, which can be great to see how many guests potentially have certain extras on their account for the current day or the upcoming month. It can also be a great way to actually view a full list of the itemized bookings or even a daily grid to see how many actual occupants might be receiving breakfast, lunch or dinner on particular days. So in our menu search, we're going to open our inventory item report. You can see in the top, we have our date range option. On the right, we have our output. We then have the three report options as to how we can view the information. So the summary is a summary total of the actual inventory items. We then have a list which will list them out and then a daily grid. So we'll quickly run through each one. When I'm in the summary mode and run the report, you can see it shows the inventory item name on the left and how many of those items have actually been generated within that period of time. Now this report is also allowing us to filter when the actual items are occurring or when they've actually been raised on the account. So items generated means that they are physically raised onto the client account, so the actual charge for the item will be on the account. Scheduled is great to look at for future dated items that are occurring on future bookings um, that have not yet raised onto the account as maybe they have not checked in. The final one is looking at ones that have been raised onto the account but also paid. So there's a, a few options that you can look at depending on the type of information you're wanting to pull from this report. If we look at the same information in the list mode, you'll be able to see once I rerun that report that it groups it by the inventory item but lists the actual itemized charges, where they're associated and how much each one has cost. The last one we have here is the daily grid and if I run that report you'll see it 
pops the inventory items in the list here and you'll notice it actually just tells you the total occupants on each day where we've got those inventory items uh, being generated against bookings. The report also has a large variation of filters that you can use to refine it further if you're just wanting to focus on specific inventory items, general ledger accounts or specific staff that have actually raised these particular items. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial today on inventory items. If you do have any further questions, be sure to click into the question mark icon in the top right corner and that will display our internal knowledge base and some recommended articles associated to the page that you're viewing.